Welcome to the home extension. I'm Laura. <laughs> and I'm Mike Moncal. I hope you guys are all having a great Friday. So what uh, did you do this week, Mike? Well, this week, um, it's been really busy. It's like crunch week at school, so um, we're designing homes, and uh, the class is actually going out of town. They're going to the Biltmore Mansion over in North Carolina, and there's some big textile fair that um, everybody goes to, and you pick out all your different kind of textiles. Like It's kind of like fashion week in Paris, and what's going to be the hottest and latest craze in um, interior design. And other than that, I, um, the girl that actually does our opening credits, the song that plays, um, her name is actually Katie Scullin, and um, I've been hanging out with her and uh, going to her shows, and she sang down at the Crescenda um, on Monona Drive, some coffee shop, and the acoustics were great, and um, she has a song, Whitney, that I really enjoy. I, actually, she gave me an uncut version that's not even out to anybody. She actually sent it to me on my, uh, on my Samsung, on my tablet, and so I'm like the only one that actually has the song. So I'm hoping, I want her to like, you know, make it and replay it, and, you know, because I, I think she's just a wonderful artist. That's cool. Yeah, so, and she's, you know, and she's going to Chicago today, which will be, and I'm supposed to go down there with her, so hopefully I, I'll be able to clear up all my stuff that I had to do today and get down there and go and see the show with her. I haven't been in Chicago in a while, so it should be nice. Cool. Yeah, make sure you bring your quarters. Oh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be down at the Uncommon Ground, so. I guess I, it's a music venue, and she's going to be there with four other um, talented young women, and they're just going to be doing their thing, and they're singing acoustic. And Is it outside? Um, no, it's actually inside. It would be nice if it was outside. Yeah, it's a perfect day out today. But so. it's only, like, I think maybe, like, four or five blocks from the, from Lake Michigan. Oh. So then we might go out after down, down Lake Michigan. I told her I'd like to scuff up my heels a little bit and see what's going on. Nice. So it's always nice to get out of town. Yes. I need a break. Do you have any big plans for the weekend? Oh, boy. Sell so house? I'm working on my crafts. <laughs> um, I do have showings as well. I have some showings. And then uh, my investor is trying to rent out his single family home in McFarland. So I'm holding an open house out there. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. Wow. What, what kind of crafts are you doing right now? Um, so. I have about seven closings coming up. And so I take old windows right. and I take off the, tr um, the paint and then I paint them and then I put, I personalize it for my clients and then I put like a saying on there and right. put some like door, um, little hooks so they can hang them up in their house. Oh wow! So, what do you take the glass out, or um, sometimes the glass does fall out. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> so then I put um, I glue on some slat woods and paint right. them, and then put the saying on there. Then if that happens, because I know you made me that really nice uh, that really nice board where I could write on it. You put um, in my front black door? chalk paint or mm -hmm. whatever on, or blackboard paint on it. Yeah. So then I could write, you know, like if I if I bought groceries or. Anything like that, which I'm single, by the way, so I don't. I think I have a peanut butter and bread in my house, <laughs> maybe some butter. I don't even know. So yeah, it, it would just rot. I don't buy anything, so I mean, I'm never there. So obviously, I'm here. <laughs> well, we have a special guest yeah. on our show today. We have Mike Braun with Braun Painting. Hi, Mike. How are you? Thanks for coming <coughs> on the show today. You bet. Thanks for having me. You're all. Dressed up to uh, for the warm weather. I'm ready for golf, and we're ready for work, and it's matchy matchy with the orange and the orange and the blue. So I figured, what the heck? Right. Nice. You look great. All right. So how about you talk a little bit about your business? How long you've been in business for as well? Well, uh, I've been painting sort of even since high school, probably 18, 19 years now. Um, we've been an actual. We're going to do this. We're going to have employees. We're going to make this our, our family business for about seven years now, a little over seven years. Um, my wife um, does a lot of the, the book work and her background is public relations and so she's really good at sort of placing uh, who we are in the marketplace and being consistent with our message and, and uh, who we serve and how we do that. Um, and I kind of do the operations piece. We've got uh, right now seven painters and then we have four seasonal folks that come 
and work with us uh, every year. So I, I employ two teachers and two students, and they're familiar with our leadership and familiar with how we do things in our culture. So they show up, they do the, uh, that bit of work when um, you know the season, you know, a lot of decks and a lot of exterior work's happening, and you kind of need extra people, but not for the whole year. So they work out very, very well, and then they go back to school. And then when things slow back down, we have our sort of core seven people. Have you guys been super busy as well? Uh, since last, uh, I was telling somebody um, just yesterday, since last Wednesday through today, I think I have 64 pending proposals just from appointments from the previous week. So yeah, lots and lots of people sort of, the weather gets warm and they're going, I've got this deck, I've always wanted to do this project and that project. And I think when the weather gets warm enough, you can step outside and take a breath and it's not right. chilly, you start to think about that. And so there's a lot of volume with calls and opportunities for us, yeah. So do you personally go out there to do the proposals? I meet, I meet with everybody, myself, yep. So I would be the sales force for Braun Painting. Um, we set up appointments, walk through whatever it is they're considering doing, being it interior, exterior, a deck, or, or something else, and um, kind of talk about their concerns, what they're trying to accomplish, if it's a functional thing or if it's just, I want to change the colors in my house, walk through it all and then we put a proposal together and email it back to them. Right. Mm -hmm. When I suppose like with the sun, you know, with the sun changing and everything, you know, like the color fast on the walls has changed and you know that it looks different than what it did like in the winter when it was all dull. You know, like, you know, when the sun comes up and it's brighter out and all of a sudden you're like, oh gosh, my walls are just shot. Well, I think there's everybody's inside all year and then when you can kind of start to be outside and like to your point you're getting the sunshine and you kind of lo start looking around your spaces in your house and you go, you know, I think I'd like to make a little bit of a change in here. Right. You know, and I think that's great that you're busy because I, I remember my grandmother said, you know, she's like, well, you know, you got to make hay while the sun's shining. Mm -hmm. You know, so you just, you work as hard as you possibly can, you know, while it's there and then, you know, everybody always has their downtime. But mm -hmm. I think that's great that you have seasonal work for you know, like school teachers, especially like, you know, because a lot of them have the summers off and, you know, to balance out that, the difference. What's awesome about the teachers specifically, and we know them, is right. they, they, obviously they have the ability to learn, they have the ability to communicate well, they have sensibilities with how to interact with people, and by right. and large our customers respond to them very well as well. Right. One of the gals that we have, she almost exclusively stains decks just one after the next after the next, she's really good at it. She listens to audiobooks, kind of does her thing and people respond well to her. She's a very good technician uh, as far as that goes. And then the other um, gentleman, Michael, who does uh, painting for us in the summer, he kind of same sort of thing. He can kind of get in his own world and just get away from his typical thing, subsidize right. his income and, and yeah, spend some time outside. Well, that's good. So what is the latest craze or the big like ticket like paint colors and what kind of things are you doing more so for residential homes? Um, I would say the biggest change I've noticed with realtors, home stagers and people that are moving into the area are trim and cabinetry. And maybe it's something that only I've noticed recently and other painters have noticed this already, but the, the amount of activity chatting with people and quoting painting my kitchen cabinets I want these oak cabinets to be white and shiny now. I want to paint all my trim and paint my doors, replace the hardware and things like that. Um, way more volume of that than I've ever seen before. I mean, I might quote a set of kitchen cabinets once a month or something like that. And it's at the point now where we're talking about kitchen cabinets two, three, four times a week over the past couple of months. Right. So that seems like something that is, is either driven, and maybe you'd have some insight, is either driven by this is what people are kind of looking for now, um, or, or if it's just kind of a change in the overall design world or people are spending time on Pinterest and, and being exposed to these other choices for design and style, but it, the cabinetry and trim work by and large is a really big change for us in the, in the frequency people are asking for that kind of work. Yeah, I see, it's, I see that it's like huge on Pinterest. Absolutely. Or else yeah. um, people are like using the gel stain too mm -hmm. to, for the darker canvas, trying to get the oak out, like, going Or the oak kind of out. cherry look. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Because I saw um, one of my friends, um, her name is Chris, and I think her and her mother own the company Chick Vineyards. Not heard of it. They, but started like five years ago, they just started, you know, just redoing kitchen cabinets. Mm -hmm. And now they're renovating whole kitchens. That's I awesome. think a lot of people are really focusing like on painting and redoing their kitchens. And, you know, because I think a the lot more people are, point. yeah, because I think my, a lot more people are getting back to like maybe being in the kitchen 
Mm -hmm. You know, like with the cooking classes and like trying to get your family back at least together for like 10 minutes and then let them all go back right. again and see like just to touch base. I mean, I don't know personally, but I, don't, I watch TV. Yep, we had dinner last <laughs> night and Keon was like, oh, mom, I'm leaving. Can I go play with my friends? Right. Oh, okay, bye. Bring at least you knew where she was, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think so many people were just eating so fast mm -hmm. time ago. So I guess my question is like, it'd probably be easier, like what kind of painting don't you do? Um, we're getting a little bit less and less involved with uh, lead-based paint jobs. Um, right. We'll take on some if the amount of the exposure to the lead is incidental to sort of a, a bigger part of the project. But by and large, um, it's something that we're just not chasing after quite as much anymore. I would right. say any exterior job that's above three stories or so, we're probably not the best fit for. We're just better equipped for you know, two, three stories or less in terms of our ladders and our setups and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, and we, we've gone out to focus on, on being really good at what we, what we do and sort of knowing who we are and who we're not and knowing that uh, sometimes if somebody comes along kind of to your point and says, I have this project <coughs> and it involves this and the whole house is peeling with lead, it's just not something that's really in our wheelhouse. It's not a part of our main focus. Right. Um, often us helping be a resource and solving a problem for somebody or helping to serve them isn't always ultimately us doing the work, but there's a network of other contractors out there and other industry peers that we can refer them to right. that, that do just that and do that very, very well, and that is who they need to have doing that work for them. Well, when was um, lead-based paint stopped used? Because I know like people had to sign off, because I, I sold real estate at one time, mm -hmm. Was it after like 1978 they stopped using lead-based paint? Yep. So if you bought a house uh, yep. after that, yeah. So if you bought a house after that, you really don't have to worry about lead-based paint. Exactly. But right. I worry about some of like these older Victorians or, you know, like even like those windows that yep. you take out or whatever. You know, like if you go down too far, like taking out the paint, are you going to run into lead? You potentially could. Because I know I watched that, that crazy chick, what's her name, that rehab addict. I know what you're talking about, but I don't know her name. Where she was like yeah. that, um, where you can like test for lead, where mm -hmm. you take this thing, you yeah. rub it on the wall, and it turns like red or whatever, then mm -hmm. you have lead. But There's lead. a number of different things you can do. There are, there are sort of little test kits that you can use, and, and um, you know, if it turns red, it's lead. Right. Uh, you have to make sure that you're getting down through all the paint layers before you test that. And there's certain, without getting too specific, and I don't want to misquote sort of the regulations for how to do this stuff, right. but um, there's very specific kind of ways that you need to test for these things and, and make sure that um, you're cutting into the surface enough to get all the way to the base layers and you can test for it. And I know that some of these tests have had problems with false positives and things like that. And then there's federal and state laws that differ. So the federal government will put a requirement on contractors for how they can test and who can test and uh, under what circumstances they can test. And then the state can be more stringent if they choose, but they must meet at least the federal requirements. Um, my advice is always to just get a third party to do the test for you. Right. Um, there's a company in Madison called Testudo that does that kind of stuff. And they've got this really cool gun where they can actually just point the gun and click and it tells you sort of what the content percentage is or, or if it exists at all. Well, I've got a really surfaces. good question for you. Um, so being a painter and, and you know, you've been doing it for 19 or 18, 19 years, mm -hmm. like you said, do, when you go to a person's house and you're like, you're sitting there with the lady and she's like, oh, I like to paint my kitchen, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Do they almost consider you like an interior decorator where they're like, well, what colors do you think I should paint my walls? And you're kind of like, or you don't have them picked out. And you're like, well, I am. Um, okay, this is, this is how I'll answer that question because it gets a little tricky sometimes. Often right. we'll be referred by designers right. to that particular person. And they have arrived at their color choices, they know what they want, and we've been referred by the designer. On the other end, you may have a, a young couple who's just got married, um, just getting their career started. This is their very first home. They've been doing a lot of Pinterest. They've been doing a lot of you know, checking things out, spending right. time in people's houses, watching a lot of the DIY shows, and they're excited and, and kind of have an idea of what they want. And the, in that context, I can help them with their color. Um, I don't necessarily try to guide them one way or the other, but I feel like, to your question of, if, do, I, do I provide kind of a design service to people? I would say mostly not, but I can help them avoid making big mistakes. I, I guess you know, this mean, do, do they almost expect you to be at a, a design? You know what I mean? Like that you should know. A, a lot of, mm, sometimes. I mean, what when I walk into a house and I start chatting with folks, they will ultimately, I bring a color fan with me, right. just in case the dialogue happens. 
and I'm happy to chat with people about color. And I, ha I have some sensibilities, and if nothing else, I have the benefit of, of the experience of seeing time and time again how certain colors end up in certain spaces. Right, and I can help give them an idea of whether that's, get a feel for what that's, if that's where they want to be going or not. Right. Um, walking into somebody's house and seeing sort of what their style is, seeing what they have on the wall, seeing the texture and stuff they have in their room, um, or different spaces, the flooring, their furniture gives you an idea, kind of what what their taste is or what their style right. is, and can help me to to help them pick colors. Right. Well, yeah. Like if they're like two hundred, they're not going to go for a bright purple wall. Right. Not necessarily. <laughs> Some may. Yeah. Right. Well. Yeah. But you're pretty, absolutely yeah. right. If they're on their second win. So right. the answer is, I I offer color consults from time to time. Um, right. If it's a larger project, we say any any project three rooms or greater, we'll spend an hour and chat about color and things like that. And sometimes I'm helpful, and sometimes I'm not. Um, right. But I'm happy to do it. Well, I noticed, like, you know, because I'm in the interior design program, and, you know, a lot of it, we're picking out, like, three colors now, you know, like, where you pick out your neutral, that mm -hmm. goes all over, then you have your to pick out your color, accent wall, yeah. and then you also pick out, well, your, to your tone is, like, then your uh, your accent wall, and then, you know, for a ceiling, you pick out your, your tint. Mm -hmm. So, do you find a lot more people painting their ceilings instead of just leaving them white, like they normally used to? I see a lot of powder rooms, and things where people want to have sort of, like, this punch, right? where they'll do a deeper, bolder color in the powder room, including the ceilings, even though it's a very small space. Right. And I see in main rooms, people are about 50-50. If you're painting new construction condos and apartments, by and large, the ceilings and walls are always the same colors for ease of the painting process. Right. In a residential home, I would say nine times out of 10, they're going with a flat white on the ceiling and then using some type of color to get some architectural interest in lines and things like that. Right. So you have these clean lines throughout the space. Uh, a lot of houses being built now are more open floor plans with, you know, higher roofs and things like that. Right. So there's a lot of interesting lines you can create by having a contrasting ceiling and wall color. Because, I mean, I can almost see like a really faint, like, like a brick beige, mm -hmm. you know, like on the ceiling and then like maybe like a nice uh, deeper brown for an accent wall and then mm -hmm. just a medium beige for the walls. You know, just to kind of bring it all together. Yeah. Because it never made sense to me just to have a pure white ceiling. It just, you know, like if you have blue walls or yellow walls or... Right. It just... I mean, I think because it's just so common and people mm -hmm. are just so used to it that they don't even... wouldn't even think outside the box to paint their ceiling. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that's where I, I come from that. So. I've had situations where um, this gal had her daughter who wanted a pink princess room and it was on the front <laughs> big exposed window to the, the curb Right. Of, the, of the front of the house. So you look right into that window, if the window's open, and you'd see all pink everywhere. And she was trying to figure out how to, how to deal with that. And because she, she didn't want all this pink coming, you know, right from her curb appeal. So we painted the ceiling pink and painted the walls this nice beige. And then she did everything else accessory wise with bedding and all that kind of stuff right. in pink throughout. And it was a really cool punch of color without committing to the walls being this just overwhelming pink. So we've done a little bit of that too. And It'll also put the in like hue of pink through yeah, the room. Exactly. And in bathrooms too, you can almost flip it, make your accent wall the fifth wall as they like to right. call it, and paint the walls some other neutral tone that works. That's another way that you can get a punch without committing to the whole space. Right. You, I mean if we were talking about I'm sorry, if we were talking about the high gloss and the high sheens, you know, because if you use almost like a higher sheen on the walls and you painted the ceiling pink, it would reflect off it. Hmm? So yeah. Um, what is that painting kind of called, like where you use different colors of paint and on walls? Wall finishes? It's all on one wall, so let's say like you're kind of doing like an ocean theme. Mm -hmm. So it's like a teal and a um, darker blue and a white or... Oh. Sort of all mixed together as you're applying it? Yeah. That, uh, to me, um, I'm not sure if there's any other name for it, but to me that would fall under the category of just a faux finish, faux kind finish. of like an artsy finish where you're just doing textures mm -hmm. with different paints and things like that. Well, you know what I did in my bathroom? I painted the, I painted the walls blue, and then you know where the, sho where the tub shower thing is? Mm -hmm. I painted that wall up there brown, Yeah. you know, just to push it back so mm -hmm. it would offset it. And then I didn't paint the ceiling, but I did take like um, the light, the fixtures, Mm -hmm. And I painted those in a um, hammered, um, hammered bronze. You know, I mean, do you recommend people paint like their vents and all that stuff too, or do you like those white just holes all over the? I just that's how I just see everything. Like, 
you know, especially like with can lighting, yeah. all of a sudden you have like this you have all these interruptions room, and you just on the have wall. these holes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you want to bring them all together. I mean, so it's again, that's about a 50 50 thing. If somebody has white trim throughout their house and the vents are quote unquote white and right. the ceilings are white and we're painting the walls a color, typically they'll keep the floor vents the white. white because it's sort of adjacent to the trim, so it just is kind of white as it occurs. Right. We would usually more recently than than in the past but I'd say 50% of the time or so these return vents that are up halfway up the wall will paint them the color of the room where they occur right and that's easy to do it, you almost just dry roll over it make sure it's clean and dry roll over it a couple of times right so people kind of want that part to go away same thing we do with almost all the time with with uh, you know doorbell covers they sort of tend to fade and get kind of yellowy we paint those too mm -hmm. in the wall where they occur just to kind of help it sort of hide and go away a little bit do you use a different paint on that? Mm -mm. Mm. Um, for the trim, do you take the wood off when you paint it, or do you just carefully? We, we if it's on carpet or wood, we we tape along the trim. Um, when trim is is stained and polyed, for example, like oak in a room, mm. um, the first thing you have to do is obviously protect the surfaces around it. We degloss it. We use a chemical deglosser because you need it to be dull and dry in order for paint adhesion. Um, and then we prime that. And then once you start painting wood trim, all of these gaps and cracks and nail holes and all this stuff start to show up. So then we'd fill the nail holes, um, caulk the gap where the trim meets the wall. Um, once it's primed and stable, then we'd caulk that, fill the nail holes, and then two coats of paint on top of that. But we, by and large, do it in place. Otherwise, you're you're banging the stuff in again after you've painted it and creating all these marks and nicks again that you have to go ahead and touch up again too. But with trim painting, it really, really depends on the situation. A lot of homeowners opt to have all the base taken out, painted, replaced with newer, higher profile stuff, and then the door jams, and sometimes the doors, they'll prime and keep that, paint that, because it's so much more difficult to take a full pre-hung door, tear it out, put a new one in. Um, so the base, in terms of the cost to paint, prime, and do all that stuff right versus have it replaced sometimes as a horse apiece for people. Um, but we're, we're doing a house right now where all the trim, all the doors, all the walls, all the windows, the crank outs, the sashes, every single piece that's wood in that house now is becoming white. And it really is a heck of a process. Good, wow. Wow, yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. Who does all, how long does that take? This particular house is gonna take probably two, two to three people per day, about three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of windows. How'd they decide on that? Wouldn't it be easier to replace the, replace the windows? <laughs> I don't, I, you know, it, you know, it definitely you takes time now. and materials, but to replace windows altogether, the amount of windows that they're painting and the amount of doors that they're painting, and, you know, they've opted to go ahead and, and turn all the wood into white. And then what, what turning the wood into white trim allows you to do is to utilize any color you want on the walls. There's certain colors that just don't work real well with wood tones. Um, and, and they kind of went in that kind of gray palette, which is difficult to work with with oak, or can be, depending on the grays that you're at. Oh, right. Um, and that's kind of a switch that they wanted to make. And then they're replacing every single hinge on their doors, replacing the door handles, and, and kind of really getting a facelift. The fireplaces are brick. They're now going to be painted white. They're wow. just really taking their design and flipping it on its head. Huh? Yeah. It makes, it's like brighter. It makes the room brighter. and. Right. From what I've seen and mm -hmm. everything too, so it's. But yeah, nice. I mean, there's so many different shades okay. of gray too. I mean, you have your your French grays, you have your warm grays, mm -hmm. your cool grays, you know, your 10 percent all the way up to your 90 percent. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, like I the heard cool grays almost new look color, right? Yeah, well, the cool grays almost look blue. Grays are very popular, and going right. back to your ceiling discussion, a lot of people like that pure, stark, flat white with this nice kind of softer silver and gray palette. Yeah, because it almost casts like it's a shadow. It's just super, super clean. Like yeah, my bathroom? It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the pictures you were showing me, yep. It creates exactly. like an inner shadow. The grays do. Like I like when you, them. When you do them right. I like them, as long as they don't push toward blue a little, which can be... Well, yeah, because I, I was doing some renderings and... Yeah, coloring. There's some very classic <laughs> decorator colors that you can go to. Right. Either on the Benjamin Moore side, Sherwin-Williams side. There's some really, really cool classic gray colors that you can go to. Wow, I just painted all the trim in my house and all the cabinets in my house. And the walls are this Benjamin Moore color called Chelsea Gray. And it's a very classic decorator color. It's awesome. And uh, it, it looks really great. And I wouldn't have been able to do that had we not painted all of our trim. But I think a lot, of, you know, some people say like, 
paints, like, you know, color schemes and all that stuff is kind of, like, regulated by the government, you know, to keep you all happy. But whatever, I mean, I don't know. I right. mean, how yeah. far you want to take that ball and run with it, that's up to you. But, um, but you know, I think a lot more people are getting away from, like, the deep burgundy purples, like, in your dining rooms. And mm -hmm. everybody's going to a softer palette, you know, going more to your pastels, you know, lighter, fresher, brighter, clean it up, you know, get the cobwebs out, mm -hmm. kind of you know, face look, you know, because everything was so dark for such a while there, you know what I mean? Everything was brown or purple or deep purple or I'll tell you something about red. color. It seems to be cyclical with people. So somebody that, that comes to us and they say, you know, we've been in the taupe for so long. We want this here and we want this here and we want this here. And it's, it's harder with open floor plans now too to compartmentalize the space with color so oh. you get more neutrals throughout. But it, it if they're coming from that, I've been in taupe forever, I was in an apartment, now we have our first house, we really want to go after this. They'll do that, and then it's almost cyclical. So then after a while, it'll be, I've been in all these bold colors for so long, I just really want to neutral it up. And if you give someone long enough, they'll kind of come back and forth between color choices like that over time, is, right. what, it, is what my experience has been. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like, I, like this season, I switched from wearing too much blue I'm like, I'm sick of blue, so I went and went, bought all brown. You know, but you always go back to black or mm. back to, you know, back to blue, obviously. <laughs> or orange and gray and white. Right. right. So, so where's your, where's your, um, where are you based out of? We're based on the west side of Madison. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Where over there? I mean, Off can you County just walk Highway right, can you Verona? walk in? Do you have like... No, we, we operate our business, we're a, we're a family-owned business, we operate our business out of the home. Oh. Um, we have... Um, the, the third stall in my garage is kind of like a heated shop space, right. and we we stage things and, and have paint and different supplies, pressure washers and sprayers and things like that. And then we also have a little shop area that we rent, just like a storage area seasonally for all of our ladders and things like that. Right. Um, if I can, eventually, I think we'll have probably an office warehouse type setup, something very small that we can operate out of, but. As, f as long as we can stay that off, it's a cost that I just don't want to incur. I, I want to be able to spend more of those resources on retaining the, the quality people that we have so they can continue to prop us up and build our reputation and, and um, keep us moving in the right direction. As a professional, what is, because I know a lot of people have their preference, what do you, what do you like, oil or latex? Or Depends water -based? on what I'm using it for. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I know like oil is more durable. It can be. You know, and then latex is more of a water base, which is more eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... The, they've really come a long, long, long ways with some of the water-based materials and products. Um, on the polyurethane side, I, I still haven't met a deck that I like to put a lot of latex products on. I still prefer, like, oil products, right. semi-transparent oil-based stains, things like that. It really depends on the application and what you're trying to solve. We're moving now from, you know, color selection and design and things like that to, you know, the, the, the function of trying to solve problems or have maintenance <coughs> cycles last longer, things like that for people like it, like in a deck or exterior painting. It just really depends. Uh, right. For an exterior house, the average <coughs> exterior house, we're still using all water-based latex products. You know, from being in the interior design program and, I, and you're a painter, um, do you ever just drive by people's houses and you're like, gosh, paint your deck? <laughs> like, why wouldn't you paint your deck? Why My, would you put a $3,000 deck on your house and not even like put a stain on it or you know what I mean? And like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I try think my very best not to. Pre treated green wood's beautiful. Yeah, I try not, my best not to. I would to, knock on that to door judge. and be like, here's my card. I will come over here. Well, first of all, off. if you're, put, if you're putting up a deck that's pressure treated. Because I had to drive by here every day. Yeah. Well, if you put up a deck that's <laughs> pressure treated, first right. you have to give it a full year before you can do anything to it. So that, right. that may be a little bit of what you're seeing. But to your point, I mean, I, my wife and I take the kids. We go downtown to the farmer's market and I look around and I just see maintenance. I mean, it's, it's like a. It's kind of a curse, yeah. I mean, I just I drive around and all I see is, well, this could use some work. That could needs to get prepped. Right, that could use some home. primer. That place needs a pressure wash. I see a right. little bit of that, yeah, yeah, for so sure. They need just mail them a card. Mail them a card. Mm -hmm. So now, <laughs> talking with painters and other painters, Sharon, the Sharon Williams. Everyone's always like, oh, you know, use their paints, or that's the paint you guys tend to use mm -hmm. or steer to more towards. Um. By and large, we try to use whatever manufacturer offers the best product for that particular function to serve our customers the best. That being said, 
Um, a great portion of the paint that we use on the interior side and the exterior side is Sherwin Williams products. Part of it is I'm very, very well versed in their products, the mill thicknesses, the resins they use, the the function that they're to provide, and I've just learned quite a bit more about their their product line and their and what they have to offer. They provide us with really good back end support. If I have something I've never really encountered before and I want to do it right, I can call my local rep who will show up. Um, just a few days ago I called him up and I said, hey, can you meet me here? And he was there in 25, 30 minutes. Oh, nice. He said, this is what you need to use. This is the product. It's not available at this store, but it's available at this store. Here's how you put it on. This is how many coats it needs to be. And that's really helpful to me to make sure that I'm doing the right thing for our customers. So their back end support is very good. I mean, there's, on the interior side, I, I just, their line of paints are just the line of paints that we use. And it, and it even goes to consistency from job to job, from painter to painter for us. So we use the same brush. We by and large have the same paint on the uh, on interior jobs, this Sherwin-Williams Interior Super Paint product. They're even using the same roller skins. So they're using the same roller, same paint, same brush, so the experience for the painters is consistent. Right. So that when a customer comes in their house, and it might be that uh, ben painted this room and Dan painted this room and they can't tell who did it because we all kind of have a methodology about how we do things all the way down to the same stuff each time so the experience is consistent. Well, that's good. Um, on the exterior side, um, there's a local company here in Sun Prairie, Home and Lindsay. They have some good products as well that we use. Um, we've done some new construction work with, with some of their paint too, which, which worked out very well. So it's not really... All Sherwin Williams or, or, or nothing, um, but I would say that's the lion's share of, of the materials that we use. Have you been to the store in Sun Prairie? The Sherwin Williams store or the Home and Lindsay store? Sherwin Williams? Mm hmm. Yep, on Thompson. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, you know, I do, I also do hair. So, like, I color hair. You mm -hmm. know, like, I'm a fan of Redken. Okay. But, like, I know in another color line, if I can get that color and I don't have to make it or mix it or anything else, I'm going to buy it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There are certain things that I know I can only get from other different color lines. Right. You know, and so I'll use that. Yep. But I'm a fan of Rudkin because I know what I'll get when I get it. Right. You know what I mean? And probably the same thing with paint. And what you encounter too is I, I like manufacturer A for all this stuff, but all of a sudden now I need an ultra, ultra deep base paint. And manufacturer A is awesome with all this stuff, but with that really, really deep base color, it, right. you just seem to have trouble with it. So I'll go over here and use this person's. Like Sherman but, Williams, you know, like their like eggshells, the eggshell that you like to use. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes paint's just a little different. Off it or, is, yeah. You know, because I know was a 22, one, what 24, 125, and 58, or you know how colors mixed. You mm -hmm. have your three, your red, your blue, and your green base are in there. Yeah. But anyway. Well, yeah. To your point, it, everybody everybody does a lot of stuff really, really well, but not everybody has everything for you. Right. And so we're, we've we have taken the turn from we get everything here. What are we gonna what what of theirs are we gonna use for this? Verse to, and kind of work to what's out there and what's the best for these folks given everything we know. Right. Um, by and large, it still falls under one of you know two or three main paint providers. That being Sherwin Williams or Hallman Lindsay or a little bit on the Benjamin Moore side too. When we encounter those really ultra deep bases. Um, and we want them to cover very well and be a little more durable. So more back to the business side. So do you do more like, do you do free consultations or, mm -hmm. I mean, is it kind of hard or, I mean, do you like, do you like people to already like measure out their rooms for you or would you rather measure them out yourself so you know exactly? I don't really go and do estimates based off square footage per se with decks or with the exterior, things like that. We'll use right. that to estimate paint. But if it comes down to a 12 by 14 bedroom, We've done that so many darn times that right. I know a gallon's not enough, two gallons is too much, so we're going to need two gallons. Right. And I just kind of have an idea of how much the time it's going to be. If there's any kind of X factor in there where it's a 14-foot ceiling instead of 8-foot, right. um, we account for that. But I'm not really walking in, measuring off the square footage and providing you with a price based on the square footage. Right. I just kind of look at the space and go, you know, this is going to take five hours, two gallons, a roll of tape, and that kind of thing. Oh, do you okay. recommend people like moving their furniture away from the walls beforehand or do you guys do that? It, it's kind of part of the dialogue when we chat. If they have a lot of furniture and a lot of breakables, um, if there are heirlooms, things like that, I just prefer to say, you know, if it's not in here, there's just absolutely no way it can get damaged. Um, 
if they are in a position where they're not able to move their furniture, we'll absolutely do that. And that plays a little bit into the quoting too. I mean, if it's a vacant home versus a fully furnished home, right. there's obviously an estimate in there for our time of kind of working around things and being careful to cover things and, and moving things for folks if they need the help. So it's, it's sort of accounted for, but we're absolutely happy to help people do that. We were actually talking in class the other day about um, somebody that was actually a new carpet put in their house, but it, it's probably the same that relative to paint that. You know, they're like, oh, I want my bedroom painted, I want this painted, this painted, this painted, this painted. And you're like, where are you going to put all your furniture? Or where are you going to move it to? Like, you, right. well, what do you mean? You know, like, okay, your entertainment center is like 3,000 pounds. You know, who's going to move that? You know, because a lot of times, you know, you have people sign off, like, on, like, okay, I won't move this, I won't move this, mm -hmm. I won't move this. I'll move your dining room chair, but, right. you know, just, you know, like, you don't want to break something or scratch their wood floors or, you know. Usually we kind of set up and have an understanding of what the process is. If they have a preference, what order we'd work through, for example, if we're painting a whole house. Right. But it's furnished and they're there and they've got kids and they have a schedule and they have work and all this stuff. We'll kind of coordinate how we're going to have access, how we're going to get in, and then we'll talk about how they want us to progress. A room like the kitchen, we want to start that kitchen and finish that kitchen that day so they can have a functioning family space again to do that. If there are other rooms where there's more work than a day, we prefer it not to be a room that's of really, really big importance, like the kitchen where you're preparing meals and things like that. So we'll go this bedroom, then that bedroom, and then we'll get them put back together. Then they have a space where they can move things from, we'll call it bedroom three in the next room kind of thing, and then sort of just work it that way so not everything has to be out all in one at one yeah. time because that's I really just, disruptive. I just have one last question Sure. before we have to wrap it up. Um, Okay, let's say you're going in and you're painting somebody's house. Let's say they like the brush effect. Mm -hmm. I mean, will you do it all in brush then? You know, on the because, walls? Yeah. I've never encountered that. Well, you know, because sometimes I think I like that because it looks like in older homes, like mm -hmm. I always like that thick wet or that thick paint look. Like the thick oil paint brush Right, look. you know, like from like cottages and mm -hmm. you know, like it's been painted like 300 times and mm -hmm. every year like they paint it, you know, because like, every year people just paint their house every yeah. single year. Nowadays they don't, but I suppose. Never, never, it's never come up. We've done some cabinets that way, where the cabinets are all completely brushed to have all oil, that kind of brush drag that fits the, it's the consistent with the architecture of the house. Right. We've done that, but I've never brushed a wall, not intentionally. Right. No. I would think that would really be time consuming it too. It would take a good while. I'm sure there are faux finishes that are all brush. Yeah, well my friend, when she painted my bathroom, she, she used a brush. How did it look? Great. I mean, she she and she doesn't she doesn't use any tape or anything. She can just cut off, you know, because yeah. and then she pulls out. It works. Yeah, I mean, she's amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, and for Mike. more information, we'll have it on um, at the end of the show. And have a great Friday. Yep. And enjoy your weekend. Make good choices. And thanks, Mike. Thanks for coming on. You bet. Thanks again. Sure. Hi, I'm Mike Michael from Home Extension, and welcome back. And now we have Barbie Mechanic doing our DIY segment. And what she would like to do is finish up with the project that she did last time and explain what she did to it and how she finished it up at her house and go over some quick notes with that. And then she's going to take us into um, black and gold painting, some tricks and tips around the house that you can do just to spruce up any piece of what? Artwork or artwork. picture frames or accessories. Right, and Anything. then she has also um, a quick tip for cleaning and dusting your house, which I think you'll really appreciate. So, Barbie, why don't you, we'll start off with this and then just tell us what you all did. Very good. All right, this was our project the last time that I was here. And what this was, was it was a tree stump that was hollowed out, a tree branch that was hollowed out. It had a natural knot hole in it. 
And so all we really did to this was, and I've been wanting to do this for a long time, so um, what we did, my husband helped me, we took a chainsaw and we made it have a point on the top, and then the rest of it I took from there and I took two pieces of wood, put a roof on, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to line up. We put some moss in where there were gaps, um, and from there, was, what I did was we put a bottom on it that was just out of an old piece of leftover wood in our house. Nothing on the underside and on the inside has any paint in it that the, the baby birds or the, the birds can chip away at. Um, the paint on the outside of it is an, outdoor, is an outdoor paint so it will hold up in weather and if it doesn't, all we have to do is just splash some other paint on it. As you can see, I just took greens and brown so it would look a little more natural. I almost wish it was, wish it was a little more brown. And then last but not least, I drilled a number of holes which are pretty much invisible in there so that they would have good ventilation around the top and drainage at the bottom. So now all I have to do is find a place to put it up and we're good to go. So you don't recommend lead-based paint? <laughs> I don't even know if I, they have any anymore. I would hope not. I hope not too. But um, well hey, you know, I was thinking you know like when your husband helps you do these things you should be like get other things done around the house and be like well it's for the show and then you'd be like he's like really? Cutting all this wood, you're like, yeah, it's for the show. <laughs> I actually, I want him to do some new things for the with cutting wood. I wanted him to make some tree stumps to put a table downstairs right. on the lower patio. And now you have a timetable. So, you're like, I need it by Friday. Yeah. He's yeah. Like, so yeah. now he has to do. Yeah. See. All right. It'll work for you. Yes, it does. Okay. And so now, what are you going to show us? Um, I'm going to show you just some simple things that you can do with black and gold paint around your house. And I decided to keep this segment really simple because I want this to be a way to show you that anybody can do it and it can be done on a number of different items throughout your house. So here was, I'm going to use this, show you this one first. This was a little wall piece that I bought. It was all gold. It was a very light gold and it was just all kind of one plain color. Oh. So what I did was I took some other colors of gold paint and I just basically put them on my fingers and I splashed them all over the little bells and then I took and I painted the frame black. So now when I put this on a light colored wall, right. it, it has some contrast to the wall. It has more depth and color because I did several different colors on here. I also hung it outside so that it would rust a little bit. Right. So it's just got kind of, kind of some natural look. So today I brought found something that was similar to this in my house and decided to just do one here for you. We may not get the whole thing done because I have several different things that we're going to just kind of look at with black and gold paint. But here's this one and I will let you put that aside for me and I'm okay. going to grab the one behind you. So um, could you explain to us what kind of paints you're using or where um, you got them? Or sure can. Is there sure a certain can. kind of paint that you have to use? I go to the hobby stores and these are metallics. These are gold metallic paints. Um, can be used on anything. These usually say that they can be used on glass and wood and ceramic and various things. Read them carefully. Some of them are more of a glaze. Some of them are actual paint. Many times when I'm painting, I have to just go over it very thin and fine and then wait till it dries, go over it again, wait till it dries, go over it again. So um, sometimes it can be a tedious project. It's a great project to watch old movies, old black and white movies, and, and, um, <laughs> and paint at the same time. All right. Um, I just have a question. Okay, because I know you said that you want to, you mentioned before that you want to do it in more of a gloss than a matte. Yes. So yes. it stands out a, more? A glossy paint looks better for the most part in, in items around your house. Sometimes you see at um, secondhand shops where people have just taken kind of a matte colored paint and just painted a little sculpture of some kind and you look at it and you go, whoops. So a glossy paint looks a whole lot better than the matte the one. It reflects the light and it just doesn't look like it's kind of made out of somebody who just sort of put right. some paint on it. It's just got a more finished look to it. Well, from what more I understand, more professional look to it. Yeah, from what I understand, is like um, high gloss paints or they're more durable than your flat paints. Could be. I really I don't know the answer to well, that. Well, it is. High okay. gloss paints have <laughs> they're easier to wash and dust and everything like that than your mats because your mats will. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you wipe a wall, mm -hmm. you'll wipe your paint right off. Right. So that's why they always like recommend a semi-gloss or a gloss paint. But, I, okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with, with this little... So where did you get those bells, by the way? I don't remember. Oh, okay. They were cheap. Um, <laughs> um, this I had hanging in my closet, oh. and I use it to hang scarves on. It's actually a plate rack, I think, and you put a... I think you put a plate right up in here is what I think that it actually is. So 
this, what I'm going to do is I thought it just looked kind of flat. Mm -hmm. it's, the gold is not really a gold that I, I'm particularly fond of. So what I thought I would do is take some black. This is a black metallic, and this is a black glossy. So I think we will try the black glossy. And there's that. There's water. Can I paint? Absolutely. <laughs> I like painting. Yep, absolutely. All right. Doesn't matter what brush. Whatever brush you are comfortable with. And I'm going to put all these over here. And we will put some paint right so there. So that's a neat idea, a little muffin tray or... Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, and then you can put, sometimes when I don't, re can't remember because some of the golds look alike, I line up the gold that I'm doing right in front of the little, in front of the little pot so I remember what color is in oh. what one because otherwise it's kind of hard to, to, um... Could you get mini muffin tray inserts and then fill them up with paint or would that one work? I don't, I think it would soak through and you'd end up washing it anyway. Oh, okay. Well, but I don't know. Sure. So... We're just going to paint some of black on here. We're going to paint these things black. And that's all we're going to do is just paint them black. And sometimes this takes several coats. And sometimes when you're just kind of starting up, um, you just slap the paint on because then it gives it kind of a coarse texture or makes it more coarse so that then it takes the paint better the second time around. So we're just kind of going to, kind of going to, where did I learn to talk? Right. Kind of gonna, we're kind of gonna <laughs> paint this black. <laughs> That's funny. We are going to paint this black. <laughs> we're kind of gonna. I know. I, I, I try to talk properly. And sometimes Who's, where, who, where is that? Is that um, Scandinavian or oh, I think, <laughs> Norwegian? I think it's Crawford County, but <laughs> shame on me. Okay. Right. No offense. <laughs> no. But interesting, that, that is an interesting thing it. because I, I do, when I go back home, um, I hear how, uh, how, how they talk in that area, and it's just interesting, just from Madison to, you know, a the rural town. areas. Mm -hmm. How different that we talk. I have a brother that moved to Portland, Oregon, and he comes back and he talks completely different than we do now. All right. Like in complete sentences. Yeah. Well, I, I just mean that. I would guess I mean more of the the, the accent. Is that the right way to say it, or how you? how you accentuate a sentence or kind of how you use certain vowels. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, because we use like a lot of O. Oh. I don't know what I'm like really I'm saying, but I just, I just know he talks different. Like how east, out east, they talk different than down south and they talk out west, that kind of a thing. Oh, okay. All right, so. Where is he? Hmm? Where is he? He's in, actually in Wisconsin now, but he was in, he was on the east or the west coast for many years. Oh, right. Yeah, I lived in Las Vegas, and, I, and after I got back, I got my Wisconsin accent back. Because I was talking to my friend, and he's like, what are you going to do today? I'm like, oh, i got to plow out the driveway. He's like, plow out? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, plow out <laughs> the driveway. Plow, plow out the driveway? I don't know. Well, we played in the creek rather than the <laughs> creek. We had, we had a creek. Other people in other towns had creeks. We had a, we had a creek. <laughs> no. we, we must have been special. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> we played in the crick. Didn't you, did you ever hear it called a crick? <laughs> yeah. And we ranked wood. <laughs> Other people cord wood, we ranked wood. Wow, wait, where is this place? We, we lived in a little farm in Crawford County. Where is that? Beautiful. Um, it's out, it's west. West towards the... Like Sauk City, that way? Um, farther, farther west, almost to the... Much farther, it's kind of southwest. So, um, okay, who was your mother again? You said Frances was her name? My, or? my mother was, my mother is. Oh, she's still alive? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, she's a firecracker. Yeah. My mom is 81, and last year she went ziplining. Oh, wow. I kid you not, my mother went ziplining. I haven't even and done And she that. loves to go down the water slides when we go to the Dells. Oh. Yeah, she is just the most fun person. We should have her on. I should. She's in it. She's she's kind of cool. Um, she was a photographer. She was a professional photographer. She did the art fairs all over this area. So many of you actually may have artwork of hers in your house. I go downtown to the hospital sometimes and see her work. Oh wow! And um, go to what, the what kind of artwork did she? She, she, she did a lot of landscape, but she also did a lot of animals. 
So that's where I got my photography from, because last week, my, um, we, along with the birdhouse, we showed a lot of my bird photography in the background. Right. So uh, I have a passion for photography and a passion for photographing things that are outside. My sister is also a photographer who photographs outdoors as well. You know, I mean, yeah, I saw some of the photographs that you, you, you had a little fox at your house and yeah. some birds and yeah. Mason. Yeah, Mason. <laughs> He's kind of amazing. The little boy. Yeah, he really likes that mud puddle, huh? Oh, yes, he did. He, 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 we have a little boy that lives downstairs from us. And we, ha we live in a house that's way too big for us, so we turned the bottom the lower level of our house into kind of a mother-in-law suite and it's it's I think it's really pretty anyway oh, yeah. we have a lovely house guest and she has a little boy and his name is Mason and he has asked me several times you want me to hold this up now so we can kind of get a look at it or will the sure. camera show down here uh, right. however you want. this is kind of what this looks like at this point but you can see from where it was that it has more personality to it mm -hmm. than what it did before and it's just simple black paint so when you put this on if you have an ivory colored wall, you can put it on your wall and you can see that it does, it, it makes a much, it makes a, a better statement and it also looks like a more expensive piece of, of sculpture that you have on your wall. Would you put any go different kind of gold on here just to? Um, yes, that's actually what I was going to do and oh, I will, okay. if you want to be creative, you can take any one of these golds and you can dump a little bit, pour a little bit into one of those pots and then what I would probably do is just take the tips of my fingers and just rub them on and I might do a little bit different color on the wings than I did on the other part and then I might do the beaks I might even do the beaks in I don't know if I should do the beaks in black we can try and if it doesn't work we'll paint them in gold which is the way that I do it at home all right so so tell me more about this town you live in or from <laughs> Oh, the town? Oh, no, you know what I should finish up as this, this, this little boy in the mud puddles, because that was a really sweet oh, right. thing. Um, this little boy's name is Mason. Yeah, he got some height. And um, he kept asking me if we had a mud puddle, if we had a mud puddle, and I kept saying no. And so when it rained, we took him outside, and I showed him a mud puddle. And he stood back from it, and he took... First of all, he was a little bit cautious, and then he took like a running jump, and he took it, and he laid in it, and he wallowed in it, and he rolled in it, and he jumped in it, and he jumped in it, and jumped in it. I took my camera, and I put it on like the sport mode where it does, you know, it takes really fast pictures, and there are so many pictures of him with just mud flying everywhere, and he was in seventh heaven, and it was, it was so delightful. All right. Yeah, you look like you had a... Well, he, he got some height on a couple of those pictures. Yeah, he did. Who yeah. knew a mud puddle, all right? Who knew a mud puddle could be Yeah, other so people are playing with like $300, I don't know, PlayStations or whatever. All you need is a mud puddle for that kid. All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll kind of speed this up, put a little bit of gold. Let me grab this rag in front of you. Excuse me. I'm painting the underbellies a darker gold because I figured that's good. That they're darker under there, aren't they? Yep, usually. All right. Clean that's your paintbrush. Always clean your paintbrush. Oh. Okay. Should make me clean your paintbrush. <laughs> You're um, closer. <laughs> all right. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, there is no wrong. Well, no. There is absolutely no wrong to doing this which is why anybody can do it and it's delightfully simple and fun okay so okay then what you're doing is good so i'll just let you kind of paint some gold different golds on there and then i'm going to grab these okay and this is these are some tie backs that i had in my house oh and i just wanted them to have a little bit more personality so i have a bic marker here and I'm just going to take and I'm going to just black the inside of them so that they have a little bit more dimension and they are a little bit blacker. And I haven't used this marker before, so it's brand new, so it should work. And if it doesn't work... Otherwise, I have one in my bag. If, we, if it doesn't so. work, we could just use a regular black marker or... 
could you just paint in there? We could just use paint. And if I take one of this really small paint brushes and put some black in here. See, this is totally DIY. I mean, you're thinking like as we do this. Oh yeah, that's what you kind of got to do. And if it doesn't work, then you just keep doing it again. All right, so. And if it doesn't work, then you paint over it. Well, how many coats can a piece of? Well, you know, even when it flakes off, it's kind of cool. Right. So there's, there's no wrong. Um, the other thing is, is that these aren't truly expensive pieces of, of art to put on the wall. So y you can really do anything. You can't really ruin it. You can always paint over it. A lot of times I take um, the mats out of picture frames that are outdated, like if they were mauve or something right. ghastly from the 70s or the 80s, and then I will take them apart and I can sponge paint the, um, the mats, or you can cover them with fabric. You can, you can do anything that you want to do. If they were Scottish, you can put a Scottish plaid, you know, depending on what your picture is going to be. All right, so there's that. Well, you know, I always think... You know, and then you especially just, like with, oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. So. Why, well, I always think, especially like with a DIY segment or anything like that, or, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter where you live, you can always make it nice. Yes. You know, you can always make anything nice. You know, it's just how you put it together. So here's my before and after. Oh, So you can kind of wow. just see that it just gave it some more depth. Right. All right, so those are little tie backs for curtains. And then I also brought this a little jar and here if you wanted to just add some black we're just going to just experiment here and if I put some black on the beads yeah I always kind of like that paint too like where then you just wipe it away gives a little bit more dimension and And even if I put some down in here so that it gets in the cracks, and then we're just going to wipe it off. Oh. And I have not done this before, so if it doesn't turn out, then you just <laughs> do something else. <laughs> All right, so. Just grab something else off the wall. Hand me that blue rag. Okay. Actually, hand me a paper towel. Let's try that. Okay. There we go. We'll try the paper towel. For, oh, I like it already. See, anybody can do this at home. Yep, anybody can do it. Just... Ordinary black, shiny paint. All right, there it is. Wow. All right, there's the after, there's the before. I don't know where the camera is so that you can see how this looks, but. Oh, I'll pick one. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just got more dimension to it, gave it a different look. Takes, that makes that gold not quite such a funky, strange gold. That looks really nice. Yeah, it, it's, it's just fun. Just simple black and gold paint can dress up a lot of little items in your house and make them look so much better than what they were. Because my mom is a fan of like bowls. Mm -hmm. like she loves bowls and sheets. I like bowls. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, she sees a bowl, I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta buy a bowl. So yeah, we have bowls. But I, li I like candy dishes, that looks like a candy dish. I like the stuff you can put stuff in. Are you gonna jazz this one up too? Yep. You wanna do it? Uh, sure. All right. What do you want me to put on there? Black paint. <coughs> and where was the black paint? Let's use, this is a metallic black paint. Is this, this the was, same as what was in that? Oh, this is just glossy. Let's use that one. I think I used the glossy. Okay. Here. And there's no wrong, you know, there is that when you get it done, if it doesn't look good, do something else. Um, do you just want the whole thing done? Yeah. And, and you know, the cracks on the top, I think that's going to be the cool part of that one. And then if you want certain parts of it to be a darker black, you could certainly do that. All right. I'm just going to black it up. Well, this is taking no time. Well, we've done like three projects. Mm -hmm. I was worried that I would have too much to do or not enough to do, so I didn't quite know how to... It's, it's hard to know how to time this, so you just kind of 
wing it, right? Well, I think everybody's got that with life, period. Hey, that's and a good, that's time. true. I, I, I think I heard some, like people try to manage time, but you know, actually time manages you. <laughs> Cause this is true. Time is right. a constant. All right, so. Here is my new lid. And if I wasn't standing right here and having to show you more things, I would do the underside as well, although actually I might let the underside dry. And sometimes sloppy is better. But there I go, whole different look, whole different look. There we go, I like it better. It's not so gold. Okay. Brought birds. These birds were, they were whitish green. So then I painted the base black. I painted their beaks black. I painted their eyes black. And then I thought I would just try to put a black glaze over top of the gold and see how that came out. So if it doesn't come out, then we'll try something else on the other one. And then when I get home, I'll repaint them again. But there's, there's no wrong. Uh -uh. I mean, especially like if it's your, if it's your deal, do it however you want. You just kind of take the black there. <coughs> yeah, see, that turned out really nice. There. Wow. So and so simple. And it just gave it a touch. It just makes it look like you paid a little bit more for it than what you paid. eBay, here I come. Yeah. All right, so there's my bird. Let me grab the before. Here I had just painted it with the, I painted the base of it black. I painted his eyes black and his beak black. And then today what I did was I antiqued over top of it. It also changed the gold to a different gold, which is just fine. So there you have it. Simple golden black paint. Oh. All right, there's one. Then, let's see. What else did I bring? Okay, here's what else I brought to show you. I am going to have my little quick dusting tip. This is what I use to dust at home, so I'm going to just add a little dusting tip in here. When I have intricate things like this, I take them out to my front porch and I brush them. And it just takes all of the dust off of them. So it makes it easy to, to dust some of the more intricate things. A bigger, fatter, softer paintbrush works great. So there is my, my good tip for the day. You oh. Put those back for me. Sure. There. Okay. And what else am I going to do? <coughs> all right, we did that, we did that. Oh, let's do these birds. Okay, so let's give this another coat of black here. All right. Okay. So, uh, do you have any final thoughts on what, um, what are you going to be doing first next week? I haven't completely decided, but I think that I will be doing... Or next time. Um, well, here's one thought. This is the one that I brought to show you that I'm thinking about doing, and this is, this is probably what it's going to be. Okay. All right. I like finding bargains and then redoing a bargain. So this was on sale at Hobby Lobby for $2.90. Oh. But it's a bit brilliant for my taste, although I love this. I love these designs. So I also have a whole bunch of picture frames that I bought on sale that were on clearance, and so I'm going to cut these out and we're going to antique them and we're going to do some fun things to them and we're going to reframe them. Oh. And they're going to look amazing. I kind of want to ask you questions about that now, but I guess I'll have to wait. <laughs> you, can, you can ask me questions. I may not know all the answers because I'm going to do some experimenting before I come. Right, so we'll wait. All right. Okay. And so if there's fewer pictures than, than this when I come back, you'll know that they were flops. All right. <laughs> all right, so there's okay. that. Well, thank you for tuning in today. Um, thanks again, Barbie, for some great ideas. And so, um, 
I hope you enjoyed the show today. Barbie, thanks. It's always a pleasure. Oops. Can't wait for you to come back next time, and I will help you clean the paintbrushes. All right. And um, that's it. Have a great day, and make good decisions. Bye.